I actually attended quite a few Pride festivals and they were amazing. But do I agree that holding Pride festivals are a good thing? No, I don't agree because being gay, I do believe is a sin and that does something to the land. Like when we celebrate that, it can cause earthquake, diseases, all this stuff to start to happen according to the Bible. We are approaching the 150th episode of Middle Ground and we need your help to continue making more episodes. Join our Middle Ground Patreon and help us make Middle Ground. You're queer even if you suppress your homosexual desires. Can the agreeers please step forward? I think the idea of being ex-gay is dishonest. I think psychologically we know sexuality, though it can exist on a spectrum, is part of who we are. It's an innate part of who we are. And I think claiming ex-gay is claiming that you've changed some part of you that I don't think can be changed. And I think it's one thing to say, I've chosen not to lean into my desires. It's another thing to say I've been healed from or completely eradicated those desires within me. Yeah, I agree. While I wanna like honor and respect each person's individual journey and their own identity, an orientation just can't be changed. Um, you can live it out in a different way, but it is uh, how you were created. In psychologically speaking, it is damaging, actually. It leads to depression and anxiety and obviously like suicide or suicidal ideation that the fruit of um, trying to change actually um, is damaging to one's soul and psyche. Can the disagreeers please step forward? The only identity I want to claim over my life is child of God. I hate labels, and so even as I came out of the closet, like I, I didn't like to, to announce myself as gay. The only identity that I clearly see with inside of myself is being a child of God. It's what he has defined for me as a man. Why is there conflict there between yes, being a child of exactly. God and, and other parts of your identity? It's not really up to me to get to define like who I am and a lot of times even in my own life like I thought that I wanted certain things and then I realized that those things were not good for me so I based just my belief and my identity on like what the Word of God says. Does that work in reverse? Like what if you want to be a singer or a painter or something that is positive? Do you say well I can't do that because I can't find scriptural support that says I can go be a painter? Like how do you feel about that in the opposite? Like don't you think that there are things God instills inside of you to show you maybe what his plan is for you? And I'm with you too. My identity is in Christ. But there's so much that makes me me. I'm somebody's son. I'm somebody's brother. I love Celine Dion and Taco Bell. Like there's <laughs> <laughs> All these moving parts to make Gilbert who Gilbert is. Yeah. And I just wonder, like, where do you draw the line if you think that, you know, God has to tell me who I am? Well, what if that's how I see this? God is always telling me who I am. Yeah, there are certain things inside of us that they're, they're not bad things. And so, like, if I wanted to be a singer, I did, I did want to be a singer at one point. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Like, the Lord might want that for my life, but at the same time, I also have to surrender that to him and just tell him, okay, like, this is what I want to do, yeah. but you also get the last say because at the end of the day, like, you were formed in the womb by him. He knows you better than you know yourself. Right. Uh, for myself as a Christian, as a believer in Jesus Christ, I believe in the power of deliverance. I believe that you can be com completely delivered from homosexuality not only because of what the Bible says, but because of my personal story. You know, I used to have sex with men. Um, I used to dress like a woman, um, used to, you know, have a desire to possibly be a transgender if it wasn't for the grace of God, but God completely changed my desires. You said that your ad identity is in Christ, but your identity is also in the LGBTQ. I don't know for sure. Are, are, do you identify as somebody in the right. LGBTQ? Right, so like I was saying, there's many things that make me me. When I say that I'm gay, it means that I'm being honest about right. my attractions. Right. It's not just like a sexual, it's also psychological, it's romantic, it's all of these things that I cannot have with a woman. Sexuality is a choice. Everybody has the, 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 the right of free will to choose what they want to do, but at the end of the day, our subjection to, should be to the Word of God. I can quote numerous scriptures where it says that a man and a man and a woman and a woman is forbidden by God. It doesn't mean that God hates the person that's doing that. God loves everybody, but He hates the sin. And it also says that those who approve of such things or those who practice such things will endure hellfire. 
I think I'm probably the most unique person here because I firmly believe, first of all, sexuality and gender are not a choice. And I say that as an intersex person. So I don't know if you guys understand what being born intersex means. You might have heard the term hermaphrodite. I was born with a condition called De La Chapelle syndrome. Um, I'm chromosomally a female, but there was a gene mutation on my dad's Y chromosome that caused me to develop harshly male. And then when I finally was starting to hit puberty, I was actually developing more like a female. And I, I don't know, I just think it's, it's disingenuous to say that like sexuality or gender is a choice because I never got the choice to be diagnosed with the intersex condition that I have. I think that there is a lot of things we just don't understand about sexuality and gender. So I come from a, like a, a scientific place. I don't come from a religious place. So I'll say this, I'll agree that having same-sex attraction is not a choice and stuff because I had same-sex attraction since preschool and stuff. I didn't have that choice and stuff. I was like, oh, why am I attracted to guys like how girls and guys normally are attracted to each other? But I definitely will say like, you know, as a Christian from a theological standpoint, you do have a choice to act on it or not. And God gives us the power by the strength of the Holy Spirit to have us walk in a life that is holy and pure and righteous before him. In services, what always breaks my heart is that you have pastors that are singing worship songs like break my heart for what breaks yours, open up my eyes to the things unseen, and they are able to have this palatable way of accepting LGBT people by calling them same-sex attracted. But then when we come into their church and we're like, but okay, yeah, if you want to use that language, but we're gay. These orientations don't, they don't change. But like I said before, we're a face what to makes it. you be able to define yourself? The definition of the word. I mean, it's, it's, it's that easy. But who gave you that authority? To speak the truth? God. No, to, to identify yourself. I'm like, using a definition of a word. So to you, like, you just can claim whatever identity that you want for yourself? No, unless it's true. I had to come to the realization that I was gay. When I was seeking a relationship with the Lord, I told the Lord, I said, hey, this is how I feel. This is what I like. But you're going to have to show me that you're real. You're going to have to prove yourself to me. And he did and he took those desires away from me. He's given me strength to overcome my desires of falling into homosexuality again. But that doesn't mean temptation is not there. You know, I don't get tempted as I did before, but even the Bible says Jesus got tempted by the devil. So like, it's not, temptation is not a sin, but I'm just saying that the, the deliverance part comes from the Holy Spirit giving me the strength over that and yeah. completely There's a religious component, but the psychological component is that then you're repressing a part of your sexuality. It's not gone, it's still there. It's not. But you're choosing to not engage but with it. But why do you call it repressing? Right. Because, because there's a lot of, of things that we do that what well, we would consider something that I don't want to do. Like, let's say I love Big Macs, I love going to McDonald's, I love eating, <laughs> yes. but that's not necessarily good for me. And would you, you say that, that I repress my yes. needs? Yes, yes. Exactly. That's, not that's not repressing. That's literally the definition of the word. Why does it have to be negative? Why can't it be something positive? Yeah, like self-control. Self-control is beautiful. Self-control is repression. Yeah, so I think it's self-control to say no. Exactly. But you all are, you're saying that this is necessarily negative. I right. think, Agreed. ex gays, I want you to be was. honest and say, I still have the attraction and I'm choosing to not engage with it, well, rather no. than telling people they can actually be healed from their sexuality. That's not true. There is scientific basis behind being LGBTQ. Let's go, girl. <laughs> So I mean, I feel like this prompt is very much about someone like me. I think there is scientific basis behind being born in the LGBT community. There are like so much scientific basis for someone like myself. And we've existed since the beginning of time, but the media never platforms someone like myself. Like I can't name one famous intersex person and I'm an intersex person. Yeah. I think it's mighty time that like we bring intersex voices forward because I think not only can it help our community, but it can help the trans community with a lot of the struggles of like people invalidating their identity and like their manhood or their womanhood or their just their personhood. You know? I, I think psychologically, scientifically, we know that homosexuality occurs throughout nature. This is not a question Very anymore. Um, and the idea, Sorry. welcome, <laughs> the idea, this language of unnatural, which does unfortunately come from the Bible, is just untrue. Scientifically, we know that homosexuality is a naturally occurring phenomenon in many species and in humanity. And so anybody who's trying to claim that it's not an innate part of human beings is not doing that from a scientific standpoint. I don't think any animals are asking to be delivered from their homosexuality. Yes. And like, <laughs> if we're gonna come from a religious standpoint as someone who was religious for the first 13 years of my life, the common saying, God makes no mistakes, I don't think God made any mistakes Amen. about me. And also Amen. about any of just like my average uh, transsexual brothers and sisters and non-binary siblings, I, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that. DNA cannot predict sexuality, it cannot predict if you're gay, it cannot predict if you're straight. And also too, um, with intersex individuals, we cannot use the case of intersexuals to generalize 
the LGBT community. But if someone could be born like me, why could someone not be born homosexual, bisexual, transsexual? The psychology is clear, though. There is not a single psychological association in the country that would say that sexuality is something that can be changed. They would say it's an innate reality. Now, and for gender yeah. as well? Because it used to be, like, they did have psychological terms. Homosexuality was considered to be a disorder. In the age of Freud, but we've moved on since that. We've yeah, debunked that. Why have we moved on since that? Was it the gay rights um, movement? No, it, Freud was... It, Science progresses as we get new knowledge. That's how science works. I it's believe if you if you were born with a vagina, you are a woman. If you were born with a with a with a penis, you are a man. What about my okay? So if you were in war and a grenade went off and you lost your penis, yeah. what would your gender be? Still a man. Okay, but you don't have a penis. You have no genitalia. Yeah. Well, that, that's what God gave me. Whatever God gave you with it, you can cut it off. You can strap it on. Whatever it is, I believe that's still what so God, God made you. So God gave me non-functioning genitalia until the I have DNA, reproductive like. But, but the what, wait, I, want to, I want to ask a question though. What what are like if I don't want to be you know? No, I'm I'm an open book, so ask me anything. But reproductive <laughs> organs like they don't work. Like, do you have so, a womb? So for me, no. I was born with literally like, almost no internal sex organs and non fully developed sex organs. So when I was born, I basically had a uh, partially formed uh, phallus, but I did not have testes, did not have ovaries, I didn't have any intern prostate, anything like that. And so when I started going through puberty, I never got very masked, I never got like a lot of facial hair, but I did grow breast tissue naturally. So like, what do you say to someone like me who's like walking around with breasts, but you know, I, I literally was never gonna be able to father or mother a child. There's a lot more to the conversation than just like penis man, vagina female, XX this. And like, I have XX chromosomes, but like- XX, you know? that is male. XX is uh, female. Yeah. So I have chromosomally a female. However, okay. like my condition is called De La Chapelle syndrome, but it's also known by some people as XX male syndrome because like, again, people just associate the penis being there as something to be male. But up to 50% of people with my condition do end up going under some feminizing uh, transition. I'm happy to share my story because I think it's very important. I think it would help a lot of people understand that like if I can be born this way, why could someone not be born a trans person? Why could someone not be born a homosexual or bisexual person? Well, I want to apologize for the Christian community because I think yeah. there has been a lack of education between gender and then also sexuality. Mm -hmm. I look at your case and I'm like, man, that's horrible. That mm -hmm. sucks. Like mm -hmm. attraction, fleshful desires, lust, all these types of things, those are different than gender. As a believer in the word of God, I, I believe that God created a man and a woman. So when it comes down to intersex, I don't believe God is the author of confusion. That's why I don't believe if you have a little breast tissue or you have some, you're not growing facial hair, I can, I, I can completely switch over to a female or I can completely switch over to a male because I have certain male, or I'm a woman and I have a beard. I still feel like what's between your legs, what God has created you, God created man and woman. There's no, I don't see any intersex. I don't see any of these wow. things in the Bible. Wow, that is that's so tremendously yeah. well, okay. dismissive. The very first <laughs> being that's been, that was created was just genderless. Yeah. Was Adam. No, Adam, Adam was a man. Adam he said it was an ex. Let's just go with that. That Let's just go with Adam and Eve are the first, okay? But just because something is the first, it doesn't mean that it's the standard. If you look at Adam and Eve, then you're like, oh, that's what we have to be. They're the blueprint. Well, then that goes down the slippery slope, because then what was their hair color? What was their eye color? What was their skin color? And any deviation from that means that you're evil. I'm also to an, a therapist, and I work with a lot of children who have autism. Seeing families who you know, question like, why was my child born this way? I kind of think of that scenario in my head. Obviously, you don't have autism, but you being intersex and coming out here, I think it's it's a wonderful thing because you guys, your stories are not really heard. I think of the scripture when um, a man went to Jesus about his son who was born blind, and he said, why was my um, son born this way? Is it- Generational is, curse. Is, yeah, yeah, is it a result of, of my sins? Sin. And Jesus respond and said, um, it's so the glory of God could be seen in him. You know, that brings a lot of comfort to me. And when I think of a rare case of your, I know you don't, you're not religious, you don't believe in that, but that's how I see you. You know, I see the glory of God in you. And yeah. I'm so glad you can see the glory of God in part of the queer community. My prayer is that you can see it in all of the queer community. Conversion therapy has positive outcomes. Praise the Lord, yes. Thank God nobody stepped Thank forward. Thank God nobody stepped forward. I guess, can everybody come forward? <laughs> <laughs> I believe convergent therapy is detrimental because I believe the only person that can convert you is Jesus Christ. Homosexuality is not the only sin. Murdering is a sin, thiefing is a sin. If I were to steal that jacket from you and run out of here, that's a sin, you know what I mean? I don't believe Convergent therapy is, is, is really converting somebody because I believe homosexuality is a demonic spirit. And the only way a demonic spirit can leave a person is through the power 
of Jesus Christ. So do you hold homosexuality and murder on the same level? They're both sin. Well, can I say something about conversion? I actually experienced uh, conversion therapy, so I actually was an attendant of the Exodus Ministries, if you guys are familiar that's with that. Big, that's what I'm sure was all gonna yeah. come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was devoted to getting people to just have heterosexual attractions. Mm -hmm. And I remember we went up to some mountain, and there was protesters outside of the hotel, and I was forced to go there by my parents. Yeah. But I don't think that it worked just because Jesus wasn't the center. Mm -hmm. And so while I was there, the only thing that I learned was like, this is how you can be more masculine, this is how you can be more manly by playing football, and then the girls, they would teach them how to, you know, put on makeup. Did you so. ever pray? I don't know, I'm asking. Did I, I, Did never... I pray like the gay away? Well, yeah, I know we all oh, made those I, yeah, prayers, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. but I mean, because I, I never went through that, that, that's not my journey, so I was wondering, like, in those practices, mm -hmm. Did they not incorporate like spirituality They did, and but prayer? it wasn't like the main goal. Like I've been able to recognize Jesus as the change of my desires to be able to say, my desires change to want to submit my whole personhood to the Lordship of Jesus. I don't feel it. Like I'm like, well, I still have attractions to men and I'm lo looking around the gym and I'm like, wow, these guys are, you know, good looking. Yeah, yeah. I'm still like, I want to submit my desires to the Lord. And it, that came out of my desire to want to serve Jesus, not necessarily to want to be heterosexual right. or to want to be more manly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I spent like... years and years and years mm -hmm. doing exactly what you're talking about, mm -hmm. fasting, praying, yeah. being prayed over, delivered, all of the things that I was told I needed to do to take away my desire, that I would submit to Jesus. And the time that I felt most filled with the Holy Spirit was when I kissed a woman. Um, that is when I was filled with peace and joy. You know, just like I want to respect your stories, there can't be a disproving of the Spirit of God in my life. That is a personal experience, just like you are having personal experiences. My personal experience and my community and my family all bear witness to the beautiful fruit of the Spirit of God being in my relationship with my wife and in our children. Can you link that fruit back to the Bible? Yeah. Because if you can't link it back to the Bible, Corinthians 13. it's not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. just like God's redemptive order, you know, like if all the women in the world decided to have sex with women and all the men decided to have sex with men, there would no longer be any rep uh, reproduction. God there has created us diversely. There are plenty of straight people who cannot reproduce. Of course. I'm just saying that there's an order to the way that God does things. And but so if God produced me, then like why couldn't God produce like just a normal gay person or just a normal transsexual person, like anything like that? Like I just don't think that you can really pray. I, can't, I couldn't pray that away. I have a question about the word conversion therapy because I did a year of conversion therapy and that was meeting with an uh, ex-lesbian person and we prayed through my sins. The idea behind conversion therapy was that there was trauma in my past and that was causing my sexual orientation to skew and so I spent a year doing all of this prayer for deliverance and then I hear some language here being talked about like being delivered of homosexuality. If it's not being done by a clinical psychologist that doesn't change the fact that it's trying to convert you from being one thing to another thing, and I think that is objectively harmful. It's not about bringing that community from gay to straight. Right. It's right. bringing Thank them from you. gay to a relationship with yes. the Lord. I, I, I'm, I'm married today, I have a baby on the way, right? Um, Congratulations. Hey, thank you. Go, bro. <laughs> but I think when I tell people my testimony, they take the highlight of my story as me being married and me having a child on the way. Mm -hmm. But the highlight of my story is me coming from a gay lifestyle to a relationship with the Lord. Okay, my, my desire to be with a man is no longer there. I want to be with a woman, right? But it came from my relationship with the Lord. So it's about bringing that community from a relationship just, with the Lord rather God. than from gay I, I'm gay a therapist. I've been a therapist for almost 20 years. Yeah. And I would say at least half, if not more, of the clients that my team and I work with are people just like you. They call us and they say, I have three kids, I have an amazing life, but in time, all it has brought is suffering. That well, is their story. Well, to be a Christian is part of being suffering. I mean, you should know this. It's like Jesus, he denied himself, he put himself on the cross. Yeah. Like, there's but probably gonna be- she's suffered unnecessarily. That's right. And why do we need to suffer as people for a book that was written 3,000 years ago? Well, I'm long sorry. suffering I just, is like, the fruit of the spirit, I, so. I, we have like 80 to 85 years on this planet. I don't wanna suffer for any reason that I don't have to, and I've had to suffer for the first 24 years of my life. What the more did, you suffer, does it make you more of a Christian? <laughs> it just, it, yeah. And what did Christians do before the Bible? Right? There were thousands of years before there was a text, and even when the text came, most people couldn't read and they didn't have access to the Bible. So what did they do? I think it comes down to like how you said your experience with the Holy Spirit, being filled up with the Holy Spirit while kissing a female. What is the fruit that comes from out of that? We have children, we have a beautiful home, we have a, an amazing community, our families love us and support us. We are happy and healthy. 
I mean, our life is so, so blessed. But my thing about that would be, I would say that God cares more about your holiness than your happiness. But, but you're defining thing, heterosexual, yeah. your uh, whole, wholeness or holiness as heterosexuality. Well, no, no, Gay absolutely people can have not. That too. No, no, no. Oh, I'm definitely not defining that as in, heterosexuality. But in the way that you're speaking, you're like, it's well, not about being gay. Jesus wants me to be holy. Why are you putting those two things against each other? Well, gay people can live holy lives. Exactly. Well, I would say that I'm not talking about like people who aren't religious. If you're not religious, hey, you can live your life the way you want to. But if you do claim to be a follower of Jesus, God calls us to be set apart and practice your homosexuality is a thing he calls us to be set apart from. And that's, that's just the, the truth. That's not in the Bible. That's that, not true. That's literally that's not true. Sorry. True. I'm sorry. You just can't lie like true. that about the Bible and it's not have me bro. say something. A healthy family requires a male and female role model. The Pride Movement is negatively affecting younger generations. I experimented with bisexuality when I was a teenager and I didn't know what it was. I didn't know there was a label. I just did it just because I, I felt good. But it was until college I realized like, oh, there's a community, LGBT. So I was, I was happy that I found my identity in, in the Pride community and I still do have family and friends who I love who are in gay marriages, but after being born again, just the word itself, it just didn't sit right with me. There's definitely agenda, an agenda behind it, speaking spiritually, right? I just think that we need to be more aware of how we use that word pride. Yeah, no, I, well, for the pride, like, you know, speaking specifically about like pride parades and like mm -hmm. um, the entire month of June celebrating pride, if it's a thing that like people are inviting children to and like people like, you know, in Gen Z and things like that, and like you see like, genitalia just like out and like people just naked and stuff like that. I'm like, that's not sending a good message. They're gonna view, uh, view you guys as all sexual and all lustful and stuff, no self-respect or anything like that. And like, I, I just don't like personally ag agree with that. Um, but then also they view disagreeing with them about their lifestyle as being homophobic when that's completely different things. And they're literally training people like, no, if people disagree with you about who you are, about the life that you live, they're homophobic, they're scared of you, they want to be away that. from you, and I there's, do not agree with that. When I went to my first Pride event, I was 17, and I was like, oh, people like me, yeah. I get to be out here, and you know, and while I was there looking at the float, there was a drag queen that was performing, and she's fierce, and it was all great. But then there was this like, a go-go dancer right next to her, and she performed a sex act on him right there in front of me, and I was 17, and I was one of the older people. There were kids and stuff and everybody was cheering and celebrating and I just felt like this wipe out from me like is this what that is supposed to be but for me that was way too much and in my line of work I do work with kids and I'm hyper aware of what they're exposed to I'm very protective of kids when I was eight years old I was introduced to homosexuality um, through watching the show RuPaul's Drag Race that's what really in in introduced me to that right the Bible talks about in Matthew chapter 6 how our eyes are the lamp to our body and if we allow darkness into our eyes we allow darkness into our body all of those who are in the LGBTQ community but some are, are, are pushing this demonic agenda on the kids because kids minds are spun and when you show them that being a man and a man and a woman and a woman being together is okay, they're gonna grow up thinking, okay, I can do the same thing. And when you do that, you're, you're turning a whole nation into, you know, no procreation, none of these things. It's an antichrist agenda, especially in the education now where they're teaching kids about gay sex and, and transgenderism is okay and all that stuff. I feel like that thing is wrong and I feel like it's a call to repentance uh, to turn back to the Lord and, and really just uh, um, 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 stop that stuff when, when, when it comes down to the kids. To me, I'm, I'm conflicted because I know that the gay rights movement has done a lot of good. Yeah. Like if it wasn't for the gay rights movement, there would literally still be people who are killed today just because they face homosexuality. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's just that, okay, we can see these individuals as equal and we don't want to kill them anymore. And, um, and that's partly Christians. Christians are to blame. Like we, we would kill like gay people. Yeah. And, and trans, trans people are still murdered. I yeah, have three exactly. personal friends of mine so, who have been murdered for true. who they are. And so that's why I step forward partially because I do think sometimes there are um, overtly sexual things that are maybe done in front of kids. Yeah, and like right. I say this as a drag entertainer, I don't like to perform in front of yes. any kids because yeah. I'm, I'm very much like, keep your kids at home. Yeah. Because also they're not even tipping me anyways. They're, a lot of times they're loud, they're annoying, they're spilling, yeah. if I'm at a drag brunch, they're spilling food everywhere, it's not my thing. Yeah. Well, I do think it's important to teach kids about safe sex and all types of sex, whether it be homosexual, bisexual, whatever type of sex. I think it's like an age thing. To me, like I actually attended quite a few pride festivals and they were amazing. I loved them, I was so excited to be there, but that was because I identified. And it was the first place that I ever felt 
truly welcomed. And I think as Christians, we need to make more spaces where LGBTQIA, they can come into the churches and feel welcomed and feel safe. But do I agree that holding pride festivals are a good thing? No, I don't agree because once again, being gay, I do believe is a sin and that does something to the land. Like when we celebrate that, when we celebrate these festivals, it does bad things to the land. You know, it can cause earthquake, diseases, all this stuff to start to happen according to the Bible. I think we need to separate the idea of pride and public acts of sex. Um, those are not the same thing. But also, I'm a mom of nine-year-old twins, and um, we are the ones who put meanings on things for our children. Bodies are not bad. So even if our kids see some um, an, a, an exposed body part, we don't automatically say that that's bad because it's not. But we do talk about how some people might feel that that is negative and some people might feel that is as positive. I think there's like biblical precedence to that, like God created us naked from the very get-go. But then now, once again, with the introduction of sin, that's where lust can creep its way in. And so a child that maybe saw a penis genitalia, something might happen there where if that, had they not been exposed to that, maybe they would have uh, remained in, a little bit more innocent. I definitely want my kids to stay innocent. You're right. Like, yeah. I'm not like, look at this, you know. Um, yeah. That, okay. to me, that is, that is absolutely harmful. But if we are in the world, or even at a pride festival, which they love my kids. They feel so much of God's love in pride. They are drawn to it um, because they see God's goodness and love reflected in it, and they see their moms who they love reflected in it. They have no definition of bad in that. That just kind of doesn't sit well with me, especially like the fact that you're a Christian, because pride cometh before destruction. Yeah. So I just like cannot agree with that statement. And as a Christian, mm -hmm. maybe we need to like relook at our Bible. That's pretty offensive um, and pretty judgmental. The pride that's mentioned in the Bible is different than the pride we're talking about yeah. here, and it's different than the pride in a parade. But we're talking about is actually something that even Christians, uh, I'm sure, would identify with, and that is just like we are almost mirrors of God's uh, diversity and inclusion and uh, love that, like it's like this light coming down and hitting me and reflecting off. And that enjoyment, when we reflect God's creation and goodness and love, that is so, it's enjoyable. And so that's really what pride is about. These stories though are far and few between. I've been to probably 15 parades and festivals over the past 10 years at any festival where there's going to be drunken people, like this is Mardi Gras as well, like That's this is what anywhere. The media focuses on yeah. too. I think. So uplifting these one stories and say, look, there was a penis exposed at this pride parade. This is all what pride is about. That's what happens in the media. That's what furthers LGBT oppression because we're demonizing us as some sexual deviants that are trying to groom children. That's not That's right, what anybody is doing. Well, why is it that? That's why we're scared that we're gonna be harmed at those. Then my kids are gonna see a penis. I, I'm 1,000% I'm against whether it's Christians or just normal people who are not religious who bash the LGBTQ community killing. I'm not for that. I don't stand with that. Though I believe that it's a sin, live however you want to live. Just don't push it on the children. Would you say the, the same about Christianity? Don't push Christianity on the children? No. Well, that's the thing is that there is, a, there is an influence. I remember back in the day, it was a campaign that was called um, it gets better. I, I did not have a good childhood growing up, especially with all these attractions, living in Miami, very ma machismo culture, and looking at the TV and being like, well, it's gonna get better for me. Like eventually, like I'm gonna be happy. But it was that influence that kept me going to want to be gay, to think like, oh, my life is going to get better if I just give in to this. And I am very thankful for the people on this panel as well, for us pioneering a new movement, the holiness movement, where we are telling children, hey, if you have these attractions, that's okay. Uh, understand these attractions, what do they mean? Let's not throw it out the window, but I don't want another make it, um, they're dealing with things acceptance. are gonna get better. They're not campaign. dealing with the attraction. They're, well, they're dealing with wanting the, to be the, accepted yeah. for their attraction. But That's the difference. It gets better, actually, it gets better because it's incredibly painful to live in a community like you described. Yeah. And I can only imagine the amount of pain that you experienced. I would love to transport you to a different place, a different home, a different family, and to see if your experience was, would be the same. I think they wouldn't. LGBTQ people won't go to heaven. 
I want to make the distinction between people who have same-sex attractions and people who are actively living according to those same-sex attractions. Yeah. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6 that if you're practicing homosexuality, you will not inherit the kingdom of God as as so as a drunk or as, show, as so as a reviler. Like the New Testament alone has enough evidence that the lifestyle of homosexuality is sinful and against God. And we can't say that we're followers of Jesus, but yet live according to our flesh. We can't say that we're filled with the Holy Spirit, but yet do what we want to do. You mentioned 1 Corinthians 6, chapter yeah. 9, uh, chapter 6, verse yeah. 9 through 10, where it talks about neither the homosexual, neither the drunkard, neither the, mm -hmm. the thief will enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. But we forget the verse after that. But such were some of you, but you were washed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That's scripture to prove that there is deliverance from any yeah. demonic spirit, including homosexuality. And those who uh, practice such things or those who even approve or support mm -hmm. such things will go to hell. That's why I, I disagree with those who call themselves gay Christians. You cannot claim something divine and demonic at the same time. If you're gay and you're like, I don't want God, God is not going to force you. God is yeah. a gentleman. Yeah. And I think that's the saddest thing is that most people, they've been told, oh, gays are going to go to hell just automatically. Yeah. And that's not true. That's not true at all. You know, it's a process of sanctification. Yeah. That's what we read about in the Word, that it's like it's present, it's future, and it's past tense in sanctification. I just want to say, and I'm, you guys are putting yourself on the spot. You all stepped forward on this knowing that she was in the room. That literally is saying that you believe that she should go to hell for something that you have even no. literally confessed that you realize no. it's a biological scientific thing. Her You're DNA right. says that she's a female, exactly. and since she's a female, but not there's, fully though. she's living she's as She's LGBT. That, uh, well, that's something completely different. Gender yes. from attraction is different. The prompt was LGBT people. It wasn't people who are engaging in sexual conduct, whether you're straight, it just says LGBT people, and you all stepped forward. Yeah, Don't give me this whole thing about, well, if you're practicing, that wasn't the prompt. Y'all came forward. Y'all stepped out and said that yes. she was going to hell. I did because I don't believe she was born a woman. That, That's I don't, not I don't, for I you to decide. Okay, but, but, but listen, you don't have listen, the authority to listen, do listen. that. Listen, I, don't, I love, I, 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 this, this is my friend. I, I, I have love for this person. This is how you treat your friends? Yes, I tell them the truth because I want them to that go to heaven. You don't know the truth? You more, know more about truth about her than she does? Brother, the truth is in the word of God. But let me, let me, let me explain me? myself. Oh my, yeah. land to Georgia. Georgia. Are you born, paying attention to anybody's words that don't agree with she you? She was born with a penis. She explained her story. Not a fully developed penis. That's not what makes, okay. Not a fully developed penis. I wasn't born with testicles. I wasn't born with a prostate. I was. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to say, at the end of the day, God looks at our heart. If you ever decide to become a Christian, um, I'm just saying, like, He doesn't look at our appearance. He looks yeah. at what's in our heart. The second that you all stepped forward, I honestly have started to get a little bit teary-eyed because I was thinking the millions of people that that Probably might watching. see this, yes. and the, the what it says is it goes to how you view God, that you are scared of God. God's love is ever expanding. The okay. gates of heaven are wide and God welcomes all of us in. And so it says that your view of yourselves and of God in the world is a scary place and it's just not. And that if you can claim, sir, that I can't be gay and Christian, that actually can't happen because to be a Christian, the definition is for me to have a relationship with the divine. You're not inside of me. So you cannot prove or disprove that. Just like I can't prove or disprove your experiences or your relationship with God. I am a gay Christian and I have the spirit of God inside of me. There's no scripture that you can point to that can disprove that because it's about my personal relationship with my soul and heart with the divine, being we call God. I actually do. I have a script. I have two scriptures. I just told you, you cannot use scripture, sir. Oh, but that's, but, but, but we're Christians. If you're going to hold the Bible above my personal relationship with Jesus Christ, then you have held the Bible as an idol. What Bible do you read? I'm just curious. The same one. Uh, the Holy Bible. I actually feel like yes? a better question okay, is what, what Bible do you read? What KJV. translation? KJV. Because, right, okay, so there's a documentary out now, brand new, got bubble wrap right on it. It's called 1946. And it's false. The movie. You can disprove it? Yes, I can, because we have the original Greek manuscripts, Amen. which he knows all about. Yeah, this yes, is Arsena yes. does not mean homosexuality. Maybe you can watch the documentary, and you can go into Yale University, and you can go through the vaults, and you can see what the Bible translators decided on, which was released in 1946, and have your own opinion. But ultimately, you just cannot deny that the fact that the word homosexual is a combination of Malakoi and Arsena put together, I would even say forced together, it was challenged by David Shelton, who 
who wrote the letter to uh, was Luther Weigel, who was the head of Yale Diversity, and he admitted, he said, you know what, you're right. This is a bad translation. And see, I think the arrogance in the conversation that is off-putting to those of us who are openly LGBT is that by saying, you know that gay people are going to hell, you have placed yourself in the place of God and said, you know the hearts, you know how God is going to judge. And that, I think, is anathema. I think that's an unchristian, unbiblical stance to take. Would you say that it would be wrong for us to tell a drunkard, like he spends the rest of his life being a drunkard, would you say it would be wrong for us to say, hey, the Bible says you would not inherit the kingdom of God? I don't think drunkenness sends anyone to hell. I think it's by grace we are saved through faith, not of ourselves, okay. lest no, anyone should no. no. He has a different theology than what we yeah. have, and that's, a, that's the, the yeah. real issue, is that he believes in all grace, so everything... Not all no, grace. Don't put do, words in my mouth. I believe that God will ultimately redeem every, everyone. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. But do you Bible believe in like, repentance? That is literally that's a verse from not the Bible. What the Bible. That is says. literally the Bible. People will spend an eternity separate from God yes. because of their sin. Yeah. Do you believe in repentance? Do you believe that of course, repentance I preach is repentance. necessary? It, but not repentance from homosexuality. Because homosexuality is not a sin biblically. It's healthy to experiment with sexuality. You know, like I have experimented with women and men and I found myself attracted to both. I would say more to men, so like, like a 75, 25, I guess I would say. It was a very uh, fulfilling experience to know who I was and why I was feeling these attractions and if these attractions were like valid, like or they were like really grounded and like how I was really feeling and stuff like that. For a lot of people, I believe that they are very much on the straight end of the spectrum or the gay end of the spectrum, talking sexuality-wise. For a lot of people, there is ambiguity in between. And in our increasingly open and inclusive world, there is now space for people to say, well, if I'm not on those poles, then maybe I need to figure out myself. And I think my greatest harm and trauma in life came from being a part of a church who, when I started to realize that I didn't align with heterosexuality in the way that I was taught I needed to, said there is no experimentation, there is one way for you to be, you have to be straight, and in order to be straight you should go to conversion therapy, X, Y, Z. That's very objectively harmful, it caused me objective harm, and I think it's such a great thing now that we live in an era where we can tell kids and youth as they're coming into puberty, there's not a mold for you to fit into. You are created, beloved, unique, figure it out, figure out what works for you and it's okay. I mean, it's healthy to try things out while simultaneously being deeply connected to yourself and listening to your soul and your heart and the divine that is within you. That's how we learn as people. That's how we were created to learn is to try things out. Now, if you're going over a boundary of someone else or an internal boundary that you have and you're, not, and you're shutting that down, that's where harm comes when you start to harm yourself or harm someone else. But if there's a consent happening, how beautiful that you could be listening to yourself and honoring yourself and honoring someone else while learning about yourself. Exactly. Absolutely. I tend to be kind of like what you were saying, Brandon, more on the very gay side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was young, I kissed a girl and I didn't like it. <laughs> For me, it was like I didn't necessarily want that experience, but I guess it kind of confirmed that it's not for me. I feel like there are a lot of people who are kind of still figuring it out. There's a lot of people where it's not as clear for them as it is for me, whether you're gay or straight. Or even if you're like, hey, you know, I'm kind of trying to figure this out. I'm not really comfortable with being sexual. There's so much more to intimacy than just the sexual act. But if I'm a gay man, I'm not going to be complimentary to a straight woman. That's not going to be a, a relationship that's going to complement each other. I don't th think that I necessarily need to engage in that and marry her and then take over that spot of her life that could be going to a straight man. I think if you are marrying someone outside of your orientation, that is absolutely one of the self most selfish things that you can do. It's important to say that in this question, like se is. exploring sexuality does not mean sex. having sex. Yeah. No. It exactly. means exploring who you are and how you're attractive and how you show up in the world. L-G-B-T-Q-I-A plus. What's in the plus? More experimentation. More, if you want to do this, whatever you want to do. If you want to have sex with a dog, have sex with a dog. If you want to have sex no. with a man, oh, have sex with a man. No. If you want to have so sex with a boy, have sex with a boy. I don't support that. If you're a woman, you can have sex with a woman. Yeah, no, sex with a woman. All this stuff, it's leading to that, though. So when you tell a no, nation and you tell a society to fulfill the lust of the flesh, which is what it is, is you're telling them, oh, just, just do whatever you want, whatever you feel. 
these things. There is and that's no why we have harm to harm in homosexual sex. There is harm in sex committed with a child, with an animal. And that is completely wrong. I will never support that as a person in this community. And that is very important to say that. Anybody who tries to, to attach yes. to that part of the community, I don't want anything to do with it. So your understanding, maybe it's your experience, and mm -hmm. I feel really sad if that's been your experience. That is not what it means to be LGBTQ+. I have a. I feel like I have a little bit more of a heart when when it comes to homosexuals and, and, and everyone struggling in there. Like I, I faced so much struggle in my life. I was bullied all throughout my childhood, and I was suicidal at one point. And so it was rough. And and that has also helped me to understand that I think it's okay to like recognize the emotions and the feelings that you are having and to to make room at the table for that. Like the last thing that I would want is for someone to not be able to talk about the attraction that they're fe feeling in church or to feel like judged or to feel condemned or to feel hatred from someone or even to be killed for just speaking up. And that still happens today and that's what makes me sad. Okay, so I've heard multiple of you guys say like about creating a safe space for LGBTQ people in church, right? To talk about certain things. What do you say to someone like me who has experienced sexual assault and witnessed sexual assault in a church? I think oh, that's well, horrible. Yeah, and I've been sexually assaulted twice, once before I was a Christian and another time when I was a Christian. And so I would say to you that I sympathize with you and that is horrible and that was not God's will, that was not within God's plan. And that's evil and whoever did that should be punished according yeah. to the word of God. But the problem is, is that the Catholic Church in particular does not, the person who did that to me and to other we just move parishes and it's a shh, don't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, and we would 100% disagree with that. Like no. for me personally, like I come against like the, the church a lot and a lot of the sinful practices that it has done in the past and stuff when it comes to SA and when it comes to like covering things like, cause I mean, when I first came out as gay and stuff like that um, and I went to a Baptist church, they're wild, but um, I wanted to talk about how I was feeling and they were just like, no, just just go be the with a woman. Just just go sleep around with a woman, and then you'll be fine. I'm like, what? Are you serious? Like, what? that's so hard. Even like, and, we're yeah. social media influencers, and I I rarely ever get seen like our testimony be put on a stage yeah. in the Christian churches, Pentecostal, Baptist. Mm -hmm. Like, I've had a YouTube channel for five years. It has over like five hundred uh, thousand views, and rarely ever do I get a call from the church being like, hey, come share your testimony, or come speak on this. So I went to Catholic high school, mm -hmm. and my freshman year of high school, we had somebody come and speak. Wow, why homosexuality and the time transvestism is the word they use. I hate the word transvestite, but they use that word, why that was sinful and why that was wrong to our entire school. Okay, so I actually yeah. grew up a Catholic and I don't agree with a lot of their doctrine. You need to be born again yeah. to, yes. to know the word of God. I think, you know, experimenting with my sexuality was not healthy for me. I didn't even realize what I was doing at the time. The inclination came to me from a young age. And then, you know, throughout my teenage years, I'm like, hmm, I like boys, I like girls, let me try this. But later in my years, I dealt with so much anxiety. I dealt with um, a little bit of depression because of like the stress of going to school. And when I went through my deliverance, I didn't go into my deliverance being like, oh, I need to be delivered from being a bisexual. I went into my deliverance wanting to be set free from anxiety and, and doubt and, you know, all those things. And so, you know, answering the prompt, it's, I don't think it's healthy. I would agree with the prompt and disagree with the prompt at the same time. Uh, yeah. Agree in a sense of like, if you're not religious at all and stuff like that, I think you have free reign to do, do that experiment and do all these things and stuff like that and find out like who you think you are and stuff like that and experiment in that way. But I do say if you are claiming to be a follower of Jesus or like in, in the context of like Christianity and stuff, like I do say that like the Bible would come against like you trying to like, you know, go out there and like have like your experiences and do this and experiment with that one. And God's like, no, 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 like no, no experimenting here. Like you're called to follow the scriptures. You're called to be led by my Holy Spirit and to submit to me ultimately and stuff. And whatever that looks like for you, that's if we're calling ourselves followers of Jesus, Jesus should be the standard of who we are following and who we should submit our lives to. Yeah, I think one of my first experiences, um, I lost my virginity through an app called Grindr. And so I was led to experiment on Grindr and I opened up doors that I wish I would have never opened up before. And that's why I'm like, no, don't experiment. Like if you're having the attractions, like understand the attractions, but don't go out there because now I struggle a lot with sex addiction. I struggle a lot with temptations. There's some things that you can't unsee and that you can't undo once you've opened that door. Yeah, so when people struggle with the things that you've mentioned, it's usually because they've repressed it, right? And that there hasn't been like a healthy way to express that and experience it as you've been created. Which makes it worse. Can yes. I, can, uh, I want to ask the panel something. It seems that this whole conversation is going in the way of experimenting with the same sex. 
Do you feel that way also with the opposite sex? Like, let's say I was someone who was like, hey, I'm gay, I don't want to be, so maybe I should try to go and date a girl. I would say no, because to me, it's not about, once again, getting into a relationship with a female. It's about holiness. It's about experimenting in Jesus. It's, it goes for the same sexes. There shouldn't really be a difference. And that's why I'm like, man, I hope we don't have division because it's the same, heterosexual, homosexual. Even though for the homosexuals, it's been far, far worse. But now let's not do that. Let's forgive, let's move in, in progress. I think we found some middle ground on this yeah. issue because I, I do appreciate what you just said, I really do. Because even though we may fundamentally disagree about you know, the whole affirming somebody's uh, same-sex orientation, I really do feel a little bit encouraged that it's not your guys' stance to go push somebody into a heterosexual relationship because I do feel like that's often what the church tries to do. Kind of like what you were told, you know what I mean? Like, just go date a girl, you know? All the time that we were talking, I kept thinking about Jesus healing somebody on the Sabbath and how controversial that was yeah. because that was a loving thing to do. And all of the religious people of the day were like, clearly you are breaking the law by healing somebody. And it wasn't just something he did once. He was a habitual healer. Oh, he did yeah. it all the time. <laughs> the law is for love. And we get sometimes so weirded out by how are we supposed to love each other? that we forget that it's really just treating your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's supposed to be so, so easy. Yeah. I just want to implore all of us to honesty. And I don't think it's honest to claim to be ex-gay because not one of you have said that you have actually been delivered of your sexuality. And by promoting that message, you are causing unnameable harm to young people in churches who are going to think that if they pray or go to therapy or follow your version of Christianity, that God is going to take away their sexual orientation and their sexual desire. I've not heard that said here. I've heard, I've chosen not to do this. I've chosen to turn away. Say that, but don't promote this message that you can be or should be healed of the way that God created you. Thank you. We can thank each other and yeah. <laughs> thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I just, I yeah, just, love this God. is not personal. Yeah, this is not personal. It's not personal. Yeah, it's not personal. Yeah, it's 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 personal. Yeah, it's